Good morning and welcome to morning prayer on March 27th, 2020. Day whatever of quarantine. Um, so we're going to do morning prayer this morning uh, out of the 2019 Anglican prayer book. Um, you may not be familiar with uh, what we do in an Anglican prayer service. But the priority is to use the scriptures in a way of prayer. So it's it's really about uh, bathing in and getting cleansed by uh, the scriptures and the promises of God uh, every day. And so we'll be doing this morning and evening um, while we're continuing to be shut in by the um, current situation. Um, so, as is my custom, I like to begin us with uh, a few minutes of silence to prepare our hearts and minds for prayer. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Let's confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises, declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our maker for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness when your fathers tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I was grieved with this generation and said, it is a people that err in their hearts for they have not known my ways of whom I swore in my wrath they, that they should not enter my rest. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O oh, come, let us adore him. Our psalms appointed for today are Psalm, well, it's just the one psalm, Psalm 68, 
verses 1 through 18. <clears throat> Let's pray this psalm in unison. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him also flee before him. As the smoke vanishes, so shall you drive them away. And as wax melts before the fire, so let the ungodly perish before the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before him. Let them also be merry and joyful. O sing unto God and sing praises unto his name. Magnify him who rides upon the heavens. The Lord is his name. Rejoice before him. He is a father of the fatherless and defends the cause of the widows. God in his holy habitation. He is the God who gives the solitary a home and brings the prisoners out of captivity, but lets the rebellious dwell in a desert land. O God, when you went forth before the people, when you went through the wilderness, the earth shook and the heavens poured forth rain at the presence of God. Even as Sinai also was moved at the presence of God, who is the God of Israel. You, O God, sent a gracious rain upon your inheritance and refreshed the land when it was weary. Your congregation found a dwelling there, for you, O God, of your goodness, have provided for the poor. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those who proclaimed the tidings. Kings with their armies fled. They fled, and the women at home divided the spoil. Though you have lain among the sheepfolds, Yet shall you be like the wings of a dove that are covered with silver and whose feathers shine like gold. When the Almighty scattered kings, it was as if it snowed in Zalman. As the hill of Bashan, so is God's hill, even a high hill as the hill of Bashan. Why look with envy, you high hills? This is God's hill on which it pleases him to dwell. Surely the Lord will abide on it forever. The chariots of God are twenty thousand, even thousands of angels, and the Lord has come from Sinai into the holy place. You have gone up on high, you have led captivity captive, and received gifts from men, even from your enemies, that the Lord God might dwell among them. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our first lesson is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 34. Beginning at the first verse and continuing to the end of the chapter. Exodus chapter 34. Beginning at the first verse and continuing to the end of the chapter. Then he said to Moses, <clears throat> Come to the Lord, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship from afar. Moses alone shall come near to the Lord, but the others shall not come near, and the people shall not come up with him. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the rules. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words of the Lord that he has spoken we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he threw against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. 
and he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God and ate and drank. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, that I may give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses rose up with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. And he said to the elders, Wait here for us until we return to you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute, let him go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord dwelt on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. And Moses was on the mountain forty days and forty nights. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us join together in the Benedictus S. Domine. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths and the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Our second reading is taken from the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew, beginning with the 27th chapter and the first verse. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate, the governor. Then when Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he changed his mind and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver into the temple, he departed, he went, and he hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since it is blood money. So they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field as a burial place for strangers. Therefore that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, saying, and they took thirty pieces of silver, the price of him on whom a price had been set by some of the sons of Israel, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord directed me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, You have said so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was amazed. Now at the feast of the governor, was accustomed, he was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to, him, said to them, whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much because of him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, 
which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called the Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. And he said, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us join together in the song of Zechariah, praying in unison. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to their father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let's renew our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show us your mercy, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us, and lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
Almighty and everlasting God, you called your servant, Charles Henry Brent, to preach the gospel to the people of the Philippines. Raise up in this and every land evangelists and heralds of your kingdom, that your church may proclaim the unsearchable riches of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone works great marvels, send down upon our clergy and the congregations com committed to their charge the life-giving spirit of your grace. Shower them with the continual dew of your blessing and ignite in them a zealous love of your gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's spend a moment or two praying for our own needs and the needs of others, as well as offering our thanksgivings. Jesus, I pray for all of the families that are in seclusion, where there is strife because of proximity all day, every day. I pray that you would give peace, your peace, which passes understanding to our families during this time. I'm thankful for my wife and my family and how you have provided for us. I pray for those who are struggling economically during this season. I pray, Lord, that you would give them hope and prosper them in this time. I pray, Lord, that you would guard and protect Bishop Steve Wood, who is in ICU, struggling with this. Uh, new and nasty virus. I pray, Lord, that you would relent and allow us to recover, uh, not just in our own communities in this nation, but throughout the world. We ask for your intervention, and we pray that you would receive the glory and the honor and the majesty, as is yours by right our Lord, our Savior, and Redeemer forever. Amen. Let's join together in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. You may join with me in the prayer of St. John Chrysostom. Almighty God, <clears throat> you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. 
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and forever. Amen.